Hello. Our final chapter of the course is Chapter 6. This chapter will guide you on how business makes decision making on capital investment. Therefore, the topic of this chapter is capital investment appraisal. The topic outcome for this chapter are Number 1. At the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the importance of capital investment appraisal. Number 2. You also should be able to calculate using the capital investment appraisal techniques. Okay, before we start, we look at an overview of the chapter. First, we discuss on importance of capital appraisal as one of decision making process. Next, you will learn on capital investment appraisal techniques. Basically, we have two techniques. The first one is non discounted, which is payback period and accounting rate of return. Second technique is discounted which include discounted payback period, net present value and internal rate of return. Finally, we will discuss on advantages and disadvantages of the capital investment appraisal techniques. Introduction to Capital Investment Appraisal Capital investment or capital budgeting, is a decision-making process of selecting and evaluating long-term investments. Technically, it requires a firm to make decisions with respect to investments in non-current asset. The investment appraisal normally require a substantial initial investment and is expected to produce benefits over a period of more than one year. The importance of capital investment appraisal. Capital investment appraisal or capital budgeting aims to allocate fund available into project that give highest possible return to increase the firm value. When the business make a wrong decision on capital investment, it's very costly because a firm may obtain borrowing to provide fund for its investment. It is huge commitments as capital investment requires a large sum of money. The firm also may have limited resources, such as fund available for reinvestment. Thus, efficient decision is crucial under scarce resources condition. Finally, the goal of the firm is maximizing shareholders' wealth by increase the share price of the firm. The goal can only be achieved by efficient and effective capital investment decision. Okay, next is how to measure the project's benefits and costs. Relevant cash flows divided into three phases. The first one is initial outlay. It is the initial investment or cash outflows required by a company to start a project. We identify at year zero or current year or now. Second phase is an annual cash flows. This is the cash flows that occur throughout the useful life of the project. We need to evaluate cost and benefit analysis. Benefit is when the revenue is increase or a decrease in a cost. While, a cost is an increase in an expenses or a decrease in a revenue. Final phase is a terminal cash flow. It is a cash flows that will occur only at the project's termination. For example a salvage value or scrap value or residual value of non-current asset. It easier to understand if I show you an example. Okay, I read it for you the question. Starlight SDNBHD is considering purchasing a new machine for expansion its business. The new machine cost is RM200,000 with scrap value of RM15,000 after 10 years. The company policy is to provide the depreciation on straight line basis. Information relating to the project is gathered below. Increase in annual sales for the first five years RM80,000. Increase in annual sales for year 6 to 10 RM90,000. Increase in annual cost of sales the amount is 35% of the sales. Increase in other expenses annually, excluding the depreciation is RM10,000. And finally the taxation rate is 25%. From the information given, we need to identify the initial outlay, annual cash flow after tax and the terminal cash flow. I will highlight for you the important information. Look carefully. based on the information that I highlighted for you. This is the answer. As you can see, the initial outlay is the cost of the machine RM200,000. And annual cash flow after taxation, 
we need to compute from sales. Basically, total revenue minus with the total expenses, until we get our profit before taxation. Then we need to minus taxation to get profit after taxation. Since we use cash flow, and not accounting profit, therefore we need to add back non-cash item, which is depreciation. Then we get cash flow after taxation. Finally, the terminal cash flow is the scrap value of non-current asset, RM15000. Ok next is capital investment appraisal techniques. Basically there are two techniques as you can see. If you want me to explain further, please get the paid version of this apps. Or else, you still can enjoy learn by reading on your own. Ok, enjoy learning everyone.